Hello physics enthusiasts. Uh, today I want to show you the Purcell effect in a cavity. So how can we amplify, for amplify fluorescence light by putting atoms between two mirrors, which is essentially the goal of my experiment in my PhD thesis. So therefore, uh, I want to explain to you today um, some measurement that I've done um, where I can yeah, clearly show the um, fluorescence enhancement in a cavity in comparison uh, to free space measurements, uh, which is called the Purcell effect. And I sometimes label this as a, just a light amplification effect, which is happening between the two, two mirrors. And it's uh, basically the, the same, uh, same effect. So what uh, did I do? So the uh, measurement setup basically is, uh, so what I want to do in the end is I want to measure the fluorescence lifetime of europium atoms. Um, so these are here indicated in blue. And what I do is basically I shine a laser, a short laser pulse onto the europium atoms in order to uh, excite them from their electronic crown state into a higher orbital or a higher level of the electron, which is here uh, depicted in black. And um, then if I excite this electron after a certain time, st it's a statistic process, but after a certain time, it decays back into its ground state. And this time, uh, which uh, is passed until it falls back, um, is called the lifetime of this excited state or a lifetime of the fluorescence, uh, which is denoted by T1. And then, of course, when it goes back to the, the electron goes back to the ground state, it emits uh, photons, so particles of light, which are then our fluorescence light from the atoms which we see and which we can now measure and capture by the detector. And if you do this in a, um, a, a yeah, time-based manner such that you can uh, stop the time and measure the time distance um, between the laser pulse and the click on the detector, so when the photon arrived after this decay, you can measure the exponential decay, which is shown here. You can measure the exponential decay of um, this electron um, and thereby determine the lifetime in the excited state. So what we do is we here record the number of events, so the number of clicks in the detector, and on the x-axis we see the time in microseconds, so the time that is passed between zero where the excitation pulse basically comes, and then we de um, the, you see the exponential decay um, of the electron back to the ground state. And you see that here, this is a, a specialty of europium, that this decay is very slow, so it's very a long lifetime, we can say, for, for optical transitions um, compared to other atoms. So here we see like 1.9 milliseconds on average is the decay time of this um, atom. So this is in free space and now what we do is we put mirrors around it. So this is, you can uh, look it up in my other videos. Um, for I have a video about cavities and especially our fiber cavities that we are using. Um, so what we do now, I put uh, two mirrors around this atom and do the same experiment. And now what comes out is that you see here in, in the orange curve, this is um, the cavity curve versus the blue one is the data from above. So the lifetime here is a little bit shorter than above because I uh, just um, yeah, uh, cut the, the time window that I'm measuring. But you can clearly see that the orange curve decays much faster. Here is about uh, more than a factor of two faster um, than in free space. And here you see this Purcell effect between these two curves. So in the cavity, we get an enhancement of the fluorescence light by a shorter lifetime. So this means a shorter lifetime in the excited state of the atom means we can do this experiment in one second more often, in this case, like twice the time. So we get double the fluorescence light out of it and therefore it, it's much brighter. The atom appears brighter in the cavity. And this is this Purcell effect which we are using. Um, and additionally to that effect, uh, we also have a nice um, effect of the cavity, which is it boosts our collection efficiency of the fluorescence light. This is indicated here by these uh, red arrows, which should be the fo photons which are emitted by the atom, so the fluorescence light. And in free space scenario, you see that it basically goes into all directions. So it's really basically the full solid angle 
is irradiated, so it, the, the atom irradi uh, radiates off in all directions, and therefore it's very hard to capture this light. So we have a detector here, but this detector has, has only a small area where it can capture the photons, so we get only a tiny fraction of all the fluorescence light in the detector, which means we have to measure quite a long time, or we, it, it's not very bright, this atom here. But in the cavity now, I indicated this by the arrows, they are just going on the axis. So we have some, some light also going out of the cavity, but most of um, the fluorescence light in the cavity is going into the direction, so between the two mirrors on the axis of the cavity. And then we can, of course, the light after uh, the round trips in the cavity, it goes out from one mirror and we can place the detector just behind this mirror, focus the light down with the lens and basically can collect everything what comes out here from this mirror. And this is the most, the biggest fraction of the totally emitted light is going into the cavity and into the detector. So therefore we have a much higher efficiency of collecting the lights, the light from the atoms. And this, of course, boosts our efficiency, plus we have this lifetime shortening effect, which also boosts our fluorescence um, uh, light intensity. So I hope I could convince that it uh, really makes sense um, to, to put these mirrors around atoms, although it's a high technical effort, but we gain a lot by doing so. And it's a very interesting and very nice effect, um, which we can clearly see here.